Hello and welcome to my workshop. What I'm going to do over the next few videos is I'm going to show you how to make a product for sale um, or the stages of which you can take to, um, to make a product for sale. This project is going to be a miniature grandfather clock about a bit so big. We're going to start off with uh, using Atcam, Atcam Jewel Smith. Now, although this is this program has been discontinued, uh, you can still buy it um, through resellers, um, and you'll find those on uh, on the internet. So, what we're going to do first for this first uh, uh, video is in Atcam, um, there are other programs that will do this as well, uh, such as uh, Aspire, which is also a good program that will also do it. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I've got this beautiful piece of myrtle, okay, and in this I am going to, we're going to 3D machine uh, a clock face, a grandfather clock face. Um, and for the body, I've got some uh, very nice finished Tasmanian oak. Now I do understand that there are many, many different species of oak. Um, I will actually find out the particular species, but this, this particular wood is known as Tasmanian oak. So um, I'm sure there's a specific name for it, and I'll find out what that is for you. So this is going to make up the these different sections. I'm going to make up the case um, and the body of the miniature grandfather clock. So we will start with making the face in at cam. And I think that will probably take up the whole of this video. Um, I'm going to try and keep them as short as I can and um, then the next video we will cut it on one of the CNC machines. Okay, so we will open up a new project and 100 millimeter, 100 millimeter. actually that's set uh, okay for us. Um, the points, this means the resolution um, this is 1500, 1500, that's, that's okay for this job. And there we go. Now, we're going to do two separate operations. Now, what I've done is I've purchased a pretty standard um, electronic clock um, motion or mechanism. Now, so our first operation is we are going to bore out a recess hole for this to go in. Well, cross section through there is 73, just over 73. We'll call that 73 and a half. So we'll go to, to give it a bit of clearance, we'll go, oh, we're going to go 70, 76 and a half. 76, I think, will be fine. Uh, and also the center hole is, well, we're going to call that eight millimeter. Okay, so this is very, very simply done. This is a two and a half D carving. And we're going to just do a couple of pockets here. So we're going to go over to this size and choose a drawing tool. And we're going to pick somewhere in the middle here. And first of all, draw a circle. And we're going to say radius. I like working in diameters. Otherwise it gets, um, it can get a little uh, confusing. So, 
going to say it was going to be eight I think yep yeah, eight millimeter so over in this dialog box here we can highlight that and just go 8.0 millimeters um, and look we don't have to fill this in I'll show you an easy way of placing this right in the center of the material uh, so we're going to say create so it's created that and then we're going to go to this we still have it highlighted we're going to go to this tool up here center in model press that and it will center it okay that little black one I don't know how that one came about but we're going to grab that little black one that one now that's highlighted and we're going to right click and we're going to say delete so there's our first bore hole that we're going to require to go all the way through now the second hole as it were and if you see the cursor you can see the cursor it will change to a target let's automatically add cam preempts what you want to do so it's it's sort of seen or oh, all right he wanted that first circle right in the center so there's a fair bet he wants the second one in lined up in the center as well which we do i'm going to draw that out and then we're going to say a di diameter of we're going to go 76 so fill the dialog box in here at 76, create, and we're going to position that one in the middle, and that one we don't want. Okay, so there we have, a, for the first part of the project is we want um, a pocket which is the larger one and then a counter ball which has got to go all the way through so now we're going to set up for the cut of those so we go over here to tool pass click on that scroll down and we want an area clearance now we're going to be using a three flute eight millimeter and this tool will do the whole operation because the hole in the middle needs to be an eight millimeter as well so start off depth is zero which is the top of the surface of the material and finished depth in our case is going to be and I'll just check Okay, our piece of material is 23 millimeters in thickness, 23. And we don't particularly want to go into the waste sheet, so it's not really worth going any further than that. Now, we're part way into this program, and there's one thing I want to do here. Uh, at the moment, we've got the zero position set right in the middle there. Um, which is is okay but when we come to turn it over we're not going to be able to find the middle so at any point before you you, you do the calculation of the tool pass you can go up to here and open this up and alter where you want the the zero point to be or the start of the program or the G54 so we've just changed it and you you watch the measurements the rules here now they will change as soon as I click this so you've got zero here zero here so we brought it into that corner it just makes it easier for when we turn it over um, so we're going to select this one and then we're going to select tool paths area clearance start off depth zero finish depth for the pocket and we want um, 
we only want to go 20 21 millimeters uh, because the shank here uh, we can get um, we can get two, we want about two millimeters of material left uh, so we can comfortably get this this shank through and get the nut on and, and hold it firm um, so that's all we need to fill out there pull this down we're going to add a tool and it's an end mill and so in this case we're going to have to make a tool so what we're going to do we're going to select the 10 millimeter and we're going to come over here and say copy and then select the bottom one because it's going to edit this one now so we're going to make a new tool we're going to make this tool in the tooling list. Edit. So this is an already an end mill, so this now becomes 8.0. This becomes 8.0. This becomes, oh that's way too big. Three millimeter, uh, and we can alter that in the program as well. This is all okay. These can be altered w when it's selected as well. These f speed and feeds are okay, so we're going to okay that, and we're going to select that tool. And this is where you can alter the parameters of that tool. Step over 2.8. Mm, we're going to say two for that. Uh, we know it would do 2.8 actually, actually quite fine, but um, you know, I don't like to push things, I like to do them gentle. And two millimeters step down, feed rate 42, and we're going to go 40 because within Mark 3 we can alter that, we can speed things up. Plunge rate 10, and we're going to want an offset machining strategy. Uh, a raster would come in into the side here and go back and forth, back and forth like this. We don't want that. We want a nice clean round pocket. So choosing this and choosing this, uh, if you see we, we, ha we can either uh, start point uh, outside, in other words come onto the outside here and go in and, and work inwards, or we inside, come into the inside and work our way out and that is the way I prefer and it's climb milling now climb milling means the tool is turning in a clockwise direction looking down from the tool so it's turning this direction so it will climb into the material around this way um, and conventional milling it would turn this way so that's fine. Um, independent finish depth. Ah, uh, yeah. Finish depth of. No, we're not going to bother with that. It's only a piece of wood. It's fine. If he was doing metal, then you'd use an independent finish depth and take the last thousandth of an inch off. Uh, that, now that's where a lot of you guys are going wrong. You're writing in saying, oh, you can't get accuracy with your machine. This is the reason. If you're cutting aluminium, you need to do a finishing cut after the, the initial cutout. This is where you'd fill it in. I mean, we're machining a piece of uh, metal wood, so it's, it's okay. But we will use ramp moves. I think. 10 degrees, 10 degrees. This is set up okay. This is absolutely fine. Now we've got to set up the material. We've got to tell it it's 23 millimeters. Top of the top position, top offset, and that's okay. Just have a look up here, make sure it's right. Yep, 21 maximum depth. 
tolerance, this, this really doesn't matter with us. Like I say, if you want accuracy with aluminium, then it would matter. One last thing here, now, safe position. Safe said 20, well, look, we can make that 10. It does cut down a little time. Um, home position, I always set the home position and the safe position same. 10 millimeters, and that's okay too. So that's now all filled in. So we're going to say, okay, this is cut one. We we'll turn that off because we now we can't see our, our second um, bore or circle. So to turn that um, toolpath off, you just click the two bulbs there, so you can now see what you've got. So now we want to select this one, and it's not an area clearance, it's a drilling strategy, so we're going to go down here. Drilling tool path. So this is something a little different. So start depth 23, we're just going to leave it at that. Uh, finish depth Sorry, start depth zero, finish depth 23, that's okay. Machine safe 10, select the tool, 8 millimeter end mill. So we're going to go 5 millimeters there, 10 there. We're going to go two. So it's going to peck drill. This is called pecking. It pecks it like a bird. So it goes in two millimeter, two millimeter, two millimeter, two millimeter. Because uh, I may decide to uh, drill the hole out first. Um, this just gives me the opportunity to do that. Center of the hole. Yep. Use peck drilling. Okay, yep. Set up 23, that's already set up. See, AdCam actually remembers a lot of information that you put into it. Calculate. Done. Cancel that. So now we can um, have a look in simulation. So pull up uh, 3D and we'll simulate this. Now to move this around, you come up to the little world up here and it's, this is the twiddle view. Wonderful name, I love that name. And there it is. That's exactly what we're after. To fit this clock device in. So that's um, how to make a, a simple pocket, pop, pocket. So what we're going to do is we're going to save that to... I don't have a flash drive here with me, so I'm going to save it to the um, desktop. Uh, actually, I'll save this file. So now we're going to start a new project. It's all been saved and we still want the same dimensions. So this time we're going to alter it down to this before we go into the program. So we want bottom left hand corner, start off, okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to put a couple of guidelines on here um, because we're going to put the numbers in. So this one needs to be 76. 
Uh, diameter 76. This one in the center of the work and now what I want to do is I want to I want to set a parameter out because I know the pocket is in you know been machined out so I've only got a limited amount of material uh, which to to put the the letter in um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to position another circle um, and I want it 12 millimeters offset and offset it and that's going to be just about fine. So that gives me the parameters of which I have to work uh, to put my letter in. Okay, so I haven't selected our line, so we want to put text on the inside of that. So you come to the text tool here, highlight that. Okay, so I generally use Times Roman, so we're actually going to put some Roman numerals here now. So we're just going to put them off the main page. Now, uh, if I can remember, uh, I think it's um, I. That's the first group. Uh, so I'll just continue with this until I've got all the, the 12 um, numerals of the Roman um, clock figures, 1 to 12, and I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've got all my numbers there. So now I've got to ungroup them because they're grouped in in groups, so you just come up here and just go ungroup and ungroup. And I already ungrouped those, so now I can individually grab them and put into our model. That looks better, and I'll come back when I've got the rest of these in and I've got them all lined up nicely. But you can see that you can put them in individually and, and sort them out. Okay, and the last one, number 11. That was about, about there maybe. Okay. I think my number 12 needs to come over slightly. Oop. I actually don't need the outer ring now, I can get a shot of it. It was just a guide. I think the I think the one can move in a little. Okay. So I'm reasonably happy with those now. Um, and I think they're pretty right. Okay, I'm really, I'm pretty happy with those. So now I can actually get rid of this line as well, because that was only a guideline. And I'm left with my letter in. So now, we select them all, and we can group them together. Why I do that? I've only got to click on one and then they're all selected, so they're grouped as one unit. Uh, so what we're going to do now is um, create some vectors. Okay, and this is okay, we can leave this like that. Um, what we need to do is, okay, 
So before we can do that, Atcam is telling me that we need to reduce some colors. So we're going to reduce these colors now down to two main colors, black and white. Black is the primary color, um, so that's what we want to cut. So now we can create vectors, and there they are. Okay, I find a little problem with this um, this text. If you notice, uh, these are quite plain, but these are quite thickened up. Now, whoever created this text in Microsoft, um, they've gone around the lettering twice, and Atcam was having a little bit of a problem deciding uh, what vector to um, to actually trace in or cut. So what I'm going, what I'm doing now is just selecting the secondary trace then and deleting it, making a nice clean letter or n numeral. So and this is how you do it. Sometimes you, you do get problems with text. And delete it and it's uh, it's not a difficult process to do, but it's a pain. But to get a good result, sometimes you've got to go through a bit of pain. And, you know, this problem, uh, you know, it's probably a good job that it's come up now because. Um, you know, I, I, I could show you what to do about this. So now we select them all, group the vectors into one group, and then go to the vector doctor. Any duplicates, none found, identify. Nothing's come up. So now we can go to the V-bit, or choose a V-bit, select the vectors, and we can select a tool, that one, select it. I always check anyway this, but I don't need to alter any of that. This is now telling me that this is the maximum width and maximum depth of cut, and that is fine. Uh, if I needed to go slightly deeper, I'll just set the zero of the material 0.2 of a millimeter deeper, and uh, so it'll cut deeper and it'll widen the letters or the numerals a little bit. Um, Cuts the clamping operation, that's okay. We can check that. Optimize already automatically set on optimize automatic. 10 mil, 10 mil, that's fine. See how can remembers. Material thickness. Um, well we're gonna put it down at three millimeters here. Because don't forget we would have machined away the back, although there is material, plenty of depth of material there. This is all okay. So now I'm going to just put here uh, oh, the bit cut and calculate, and there we go. If it comes out all right on here, it's going to cut it. There's not going to be any problems on the machine, and we can simulate that. That's scroll all the way down, simulations all the way down the bottom of here. First of all, go into 3D, simulate. And this is exactly how it's going to be machined on the machine. There we go. Uh, where's it? So that's how it's going to come out. Of course, it's already going to be a hole in the middle there. There's our lettering. It's actually going to be wood grain, so we can 
we can actually simulate that too. So if we open up the simulate editor here and pull down, we can choose the type of material that we want in the bottom here. It's at the default at the minute, but we want, let me see, we'll go for a, as we're in wood, beach, yeah, beach is okay. Vertical beach, apply. Uh, depth of color, apply. There we go. And that is pretty well what it's going to look like when it's finished. So we'll just save that toolpath now. Uh, into toolpaths, that will bring up this, go into that, save that, and it's say V bit I'm going to save it to the desktop done and we'll actually save this file as well and it's um And, I can, and we'll save that so we can always come back to this at a later date. So there we have our clock face. And that is the two operations. Okay, so there you have the two operations. Uh, and that is the pocket cut from the back and the board through to, uh, to put this little um, electronic uh, clock mechanism in and um, also the making of the clock face in Roman numerals and uh, the v-bit carving of those um, those numerals so I hope you have liked the video today and uh, I hope you tune back in to my station or channel and um, for the, the next episode in this group, and that will be machining that clock face uh, into this piece of uh, material, which is uh, metal. And um, I think uh, you, you're going to like the finished product, uh, although it's going to probably take... Um, uh, at least three videos to uh, to to make this, but uh, it's a very um, desirable little product. I think that uh, anybody with a CNC machine can uh, can manufacture. So, thank you for joining me, and uh, don't forget uh, there's over 300 videos now between the two of my channels. Um, I do art cam. Uh, look, the, the art cam program. Um, is very similar to the Aspire program. They work in a very similar manner. The tools are the same. So if you have Aspire, you you know you can learn from me teaching you on AtCam. There's not a lot of difference between them. Um, so there's the CAM programs, um, CNC routers, wood turning. Do a lot of wood turning. Very successful. Um, laser and um, now um, milling machines, CNC milling machines. So um, thank you for joining me and uh, bye for now. <laughs>